JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for December the 29th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read uh, the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, uh, the US dollar traded mixed against the other G10 currencies on Monday and during uh, the Asian trading Tuesday. It gained against uh, the pound, the Aussie, the yen and the Kiwi in that order, while it, under, uh, it underperformed uh, versus the Swiss franc, the euro, the Canadian dollar and NOC. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against the uh, SEC. The strengthening of the Swiss franc, combined with the weakening of the risk-linked uh, Aussie and Kiwi, suggests uh, that the markets traded in a risk-off fashion yesterday. However, the weakening of the Japanese yen points otherwise. Thus, in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our, to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here, major EU and US indices were a sea of green, with all three of Wall Street's main indices hitting fresh record highs. The UK FTSE 100 was closed in celebration of the Boxing Day. The upbeat investor morale rolled uh, over into the Asian session today as well. Although China's uh, Shanghai Composite slid 0.54%, Japan's Nikkei 225, Hong Kong's Hang Seng and South Korea's KOSPI gained 266 0.96% and 0.42% respectively. It seems that uh, the catalyst uh, behind the optimism was not a single event, rather than a blend of uh, developments. Last Thursday, the UK eventually reached a trade deal with the EU, eliminating the risk of a no-deal uh, Brexit in, uh, in two days. On top of that, uh, last week, the US Congress voted in favor of a $2.3 trillion spending package, which includes a an 892 billion US dollar coronavirus aid bill. Although President Trump initially refused to sign the proposal into law, he changed his mind and signed it on Sunday, restoring employment benefits to, million of, to millions of Americans and averting a government shutdown. The launch of a cross border European vaccination program may have also helped market sentiment as it raised hopes of a coronavirus free world in a few months, which could result in a strong economic rebound. All this comes in line with our view for higher equities in the near term. Remember, we've been highlighting that the vaccinations, a stimulus package in the US, and the Biden presidency may continue benefiting risk assets. Why Biden? Because we expect him to adopt a softer stance on global trade uh, than uh, Trump did. The Brexit Accord uh, paints an even brighter picture. Yesterday, we said that in the absence of any major economic and political events on this week's schedule, financial markets may trade in a quiet mode. However, if we were to assign a direction to the risks, it would be to the upside, in line with our broader view. Sometimes, thin liquidity results in uh, violent swings in the markets, and thus we would stay careful despite the almost empty agenda. Now, as, uh, as for today's events, Yesterday, the U.S. House of Representatives had voted in favor of increasing payments to qualified Americans to $2,000 from $600, sending the measure to the Senate. The Senate is due to convene today, and it remains to be seen whether the chamber will also approve the change. That said, although President Trump supports the change, other Republicans don't. And having in mind that the Senate is controlled by Republicans, the chances of the proposal of the proposal being approved are very slim. 
Now, as for the data, we only get the American uh, Petroleum Institute report on crude oil inventories for last week, but as it is always the case, no forecast is available. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.